Get shit done. This would be the motto of this long lost but soon reinvented company, Blackberry. Starting with the key one, TCL, the Chinese mother company, began a successful campaign of making a Blackberry name worth mentioning in the Android space. Now, Key 2 is a well-refined successor of the Key 1, bringing much-needed improvements in the hardware section with better chipset, more RAM and better keyboard. Also, lifestyle features like dual camera and more storage were added to better serve the user on the multimedia front. But why would this get shit done catchphrase be better suited for this phone than for any other smartphone brand? Let's analyze together the 5 pillars to make a great smartphone in 2018. Design and build quality hardware and performance, software, cameras, and price. We live in a world where every smartphone manufacturer out there tries to have the largest screen with the slimmer bezels, the most eye candy colored glass back, or the most dumb innovation in the history of smartphone design. Yes, I'm looking at you, Apple. With your notch, you ruined Android for everyone. Blackberry's design is instantly recognizable whether you look at it from the front and see that unique hardware keyboard or from the back where that big logo sits on a rubberized textured back. The Key 2 is the pinnacle of Blackberry's hardware design for 2018. It is made from great materials like 7000 aluminum series, Corning Gorilla Glass or heavy duty rubberized polycarbonate. The phone is slim, light, well balanced and rests perfectly in the hand thanks to the slightly rounded corners on the bottom end. And thanks to the material on the back, it also gives much more grip when handling than any other material out there like glass, metal or plastic. The shape, design and materials used just keep the phone glued to your hand. Also, great for handling are the three side button, the volume rocker, power and convenience key that is also remappable in three different actions at your choice. They have great tactile feedback and satisfying clicks, but this is not out of the ordinary for the best hardware keyboard of the smartphone manufacturer. Speaking of the keyboard, now it has a matte finish which is even better for grip and tactile feeling, and has a strong backlight active only when in low light. On the back, the dual camera system sits behind the scratch-resistant glass, but it's not leveled with the rest of the phone. On the bottom side, USB Type-C charging port surrounded by the speakers and microphone grills. And guess what, 3.5mm jack is also present on the top of the phone. All in all, perfect build quality and design from Blackberry. It just might be the only phone out there that doesn't force me in buying a protective case for it. On the hardware front, the Key 2 is in line with the upper mid-range phones from 2018, with some flagship parts sprinkled here and there. Starting with the display, the Key 2 has the same display as the Key 1, a 4.5 inches in diagonal 3x2 aspect ratio LCD IPS display, with an uncommon resolution of 1080 by 1620 pixels and 434 ppi pixel density. It is covered by Corning Gorilla Glass 3, which makes it even more scratch resistant but less shock proof than the newer Gorilla Glass models. As for the screen quality, it's nothing like the latest displays from Samsung or LG, but it gets the job done with a maximum display brightness of just under 580 nits and a contrast ratio of over 1.5K for deep blacks. Sunlight legibility is also up there with the better IPS LCD displays, so nothing to worry about. What is above many other flagship phones these days is the battery life. The BlackBerry Key 2 having a beefy 3500mAh battery with Quick Charge 3 on board. Quick Charge adapter included in the box. Thanks to the great battery capacity, very battery friendly Snapdragon 660 chipset and small display, and of course a very well optimized Android 8.1 Oreo, the BlackBerry Key 2 constantly got me through one day of very heavy use, with social media, many email accounts synchronized, YouTube and YouTube analytics, and Bluetooth headset permanently connected and so on. What is even better is that sometimes it even got me through the second day of use. So saying that this BlackBerry is a two-day workhorse smartphone is no lie. Where the Kitu could use some improvements is in audio quality, be it on the headphones or in the speaker. Connecting the bundle headphones, the sound is clear and rich, but lacks a little volume. While disconnecting the headphones, the single button speaker has enough volume, but lacks depth and bass. A stereo pair of speakers and the quality DAC could be a great improvement for the future BlackBerry Key 3. But, for this business-oriented phone, it does the job. 
So let's talk performance. Last year Key One was great smartphone with a not so great power behind it, and many people complained of lag and stutter in the UI. This year Key Two improves on four main aspects: much better CPU and GPU, double the RAM and double the storage, and this time it's UFS fast memory also, not the eMMC5 like the previous model. Benchmark scores are not really top tier, but then again this is not OnePlus 6 and doesn't try to be one. Few people game on a BlackBerry device, but even so, it can run every game out there with ease. Actually, in my opinion, everything above Snapdragon 660 or 820 level of performance is just overkill or bragging rights at this moment. There are few apps out there that can take full advantage of the latest and greatest Snapdragon 845. So, Key 2 is a pleasure to use, and as responsive and snappy as any 2018 smartphone should be. I didn't experience slowdowns or hiccups whatsoever using this device, so a more powerful chipset would not only be overkill for it, but it would also have meant shorter battery life. BlackBerry Key 2 comes with Android 8.1 Oreo out of the box and will surely get Android Pie at any given time. The look of the UI is very stock-like, so it's clean and fast, but don't be fooled by the appearance. It's a BlackBerry, so customization and value apps are very well implemented behind the first layer of software interface. You can customize the launcher at your liking, from icon grid, widgets or BlackBerry's very own pop-up widgets that appear when you swipe up the apps that support it, and shortcuts to everything you need, from a person in the contacts to a specified action. There is a dark mode too, but it's more of a grayish tone, so no AMOLED blacks here. You can even choose the recent layout from three presets. Masonry, which is Blackberry's own thing, tiles and classical Rolodex. So, as you can see, the software of the Key 2 is stock looking at the surface, but very customizable underneath. What about the Blackberry apps? Well, we have few of those, and they are pretty useful I might say. DTEC is BlackBerry's own security app that gives you a more comprehensive look at what apps are using which permissions. In the Events tab, you can see a log of events that triggered a sensitive permission. For example, when Facebook accesses your phone permission, it will show as an event here. Also, the Application tab lets you see all your apps and exactly which permissions they have access to. The Locker is where you can store sensitive files, app, photos and access Firefox Focus browser. You can access the locker via password or fingerprint, and the camera app can take photos that are stored directly into the locker by using the fingerprint scanner as the shutter button. Also, there are two note apps, Notable and Notes, each of them with different type of note taking in mind. Redactor is a small but interesting feature. If you'd like to send a colleague a screenshot, you can use the reactor to lay black bars over sensitive information such as a client private information. But Probably the most important app in the entire BlackBerry suite is the BlackBerry Hub. It is a service that keeps track of all your notifications from every app installed on your smartphone and centralizes all of them in one place. This is a really powerful tool that lets you see the past notifications even after you've swiped them away. So we have talked about the keyboard in the hardware section, but we must talk about it in the software section as well. There are 52 possible keyboard shortcuts on the Key 2. Each letter key on the keyboard can be assigned two different shortcuts, a long or a short press. New to the key 2 is the speed key. This key allows you to open any of your keyboard shortcuts without having to go home. If the 55 shortcuts are not enough, you have the convenience key on the side, with three different shortcuts for every one of the three profiles. Meeting, home and car. That means an additional 9 shortcuts at your disposal just by clicking the button with your thumb. So, everywhere you are in the UI or in the app, BlackBerry lets you start another app, call someone or make a setting just by the press of a button. Now this is what I call speed and productivity. More of the keyboard features will be covered in a special video in the following days, as there are too many to mention in this video. And this wouldn't be a Pixel Peeper video if we wouldn't talk about the cameras. But before we begin, keep in mind that this is just a preview. A much more in-depth camera review and comparison will follow soon. The Key 2 has new dual camera setup, with dual 12 megapixel sensors, one with 1.28 micron pixels and an f1.8 aperture, while the secondary telephoto camera uses 1 micron pixel and a slower aperture of f2.6. This second camera also enables 2 times optical zoom. I have searched the entire Sony Exmor RS sensor database and I couldn't find these two sensors, 
which leads me to believe that they are made by either Samsung or Omnivision. But I might be wrong, so take this info with a grain of salt. As for the pictures they take, at first sight the camera is in between mid-range and flagship territory. In good light, pictures are sharp and detailed, but for high contrast situation it is better to manually turn on HDR, as on the auto settings it rarely triggers, and the pictures are left with a poor dynamic range. HDR fixes these issues, but photos get slightly softer. Nothing major nonetheless. Colors and white balance are pretty natural when the phone gets it right, but there were some instances where the white balance was a little off. In low light, the quality of the pictures degrade quickly, but not to unbearable levels. Pictures still come relatively sharp, but they have some noise and noise reduction artifacts. Also, do not use HDR in low light, it does more harm than good, increasing the noise levels too much. As for the selfie camera, this is pretty bad. Soft pictures with bad color balance and low dynamic range. But then again, this phone is not made for that, so it's irrelevant how good or bad the selfie camera is, because it will do just fine for video calling and occasional meeting selfies. Video quality is also a mixed bag, with 1080p videos coming sharp, detailed, as well as stabilized. But 4K is lacking any sort of video stabilization. It's a nightmare when you have less than steady hands. For a more detailed camera review, stay tuned for the next couple of days, it will come soon. The BlackBerry Key 2 is $650. Expensive? Nah. Cheap? Not really. It is exactly how it's supposed to be. Why? Because the Key 2 has no competition. Don't try to compare this BlackBerry phone with a OnePlus 6 or a Galaxy S9. It's useless. The BlackBerry Key 2 simply gets shit done. No fuss, no sweat. It is a type of phone that has a very narrow niche of users, but among those users, there is no alternative. If BlackBerry wants to charge $1000 for their next BlackBerry Key 3, they can do it and still sell this phone. I myself am starting to get drawn into this compelling allure of business smartphone and I must say that for now, even if I have the latest and greatest phones from Samsung and Huawei at my disposal, the Key 2 will be my daily driver phone for the months to come, replacing my trusty Pixel 2 XL. How's that for a turn of events?